In this video, we've got two readiness standards here, but really both of these deal with inequalities. We're going to write inequalities. We're going to graph inequalities. Um, and so, just a little reminder that a solution to an inequality is an ordered pair that makes the inequality true. So, for example, if we were to trying to determine if this point with that x-coordinate and that y-coordinate is a solution to this inequality, all I need to do is substitute in my values and see if I get a true statement. Notice I substituted y in for y. I substituted x in for x. Notice I kept my negative sign there. And then when I simplify, negative 2 plus 1 becomes negative 1. Since 3 is greater than or equal to negative 1, that is a true statement, meaning this is true. 3 is greater than or equal to negative 1, so it is a solution. We can represent the same inequality on the graph, and in this case, I can see that 2, 3 is a solution because the ordered pair 2, 3 falls within that shaded region. All the points within this shaded region are solutions to this inequality. So I can check by substituting in, or I could check by graphing. Let's jump into it. In this first one, it says, which graph represents the solution set to this inequality? Well, first thing we're going to do is graph the boundary line, okay? So I'm going to look for negative 2. I've got it right there. My slope is negative 7 halves. Well, if I'm looking at the boundary line, it looks like all of these have the same boundary line. So the line itself isn't the problem. It really just has to do with whether or not we have a dotted line or a solid line, because that's one difference, and whether we shade below or whether we shade above. Now, one thing that we need to know, and I'm going to make a little table for us here, dotted lines, solid lines, and then we've got shade above and shade below. Hopefully this will make sense once I finish all this. But if I'm going to make a little table here, if it's dotted and you're shading above, that means we just have the greater than symbol. If you're dotted and shading below, it's going to be the less than symbol. If it's a solid line and you're shading above it, it's going to be greater than or equal to. And if it's a solid line and you're shading below it, it's going to be less than or equal to. Basically, to shade above, you have the greater than symbols. To shade below, you have the less than symbols. The way you tell if it's dotted or solid is if it has the little or equal to's or not. So if we look here, this inequality is in slope-intercept form, so we can use our little table. We are, looks like we are going to have a solid line, and it's shaded above because this symbol right here is the same as the symbol in our inequality. So where we have a solid line and shaded above looks like answer choice B. All right, let's do the next question. Which of the following points is not, I always underline those, a solution for this inequality? Now, there's two different ways we could solve this. We're going to look at both. But for, the first way we're going to look at is graphing. If I'm going to graph this, there's something that I have to do first. Hopefully, you're looking at this and saying, hey, we need to get this in slope-intercept form. So let me solve this little inequality for y real quick. Then I'm going to divide by 2 on each side. And I'm going to end up with the inequality y is less than or equal to, that becomes 2x, that becomes 3. So this is really the inequality we're graphing, y is less than or equal to 2x plus 3. So I've got to start at a y-intercept of 3 and do my slope of 2 for my boundary line. Since we have the or equal to symbol, this is going to be a solid line. Since that's a less than, we're going to be shaded below. So now I'm just going to go through my answer choices. Um, first, the point zero, 0, is right here. That's answer choice A. That clearly is a solution because it's in the shaded region. So it must not be the right answer. Next, let's do answer choice B. 1, negative 1 would be right there. That's answer choice B. Once again, that's clearly a solution. Answer choice C is negative 2, 2. Negative 2, 2 would be right there, which I think that's probably going to be our answer because it is not in the shaded region, but let's go ahead and check with D. D is negative 1, 1. 
negative 1, 1 would be right there, and that's D. An important thing about answer choice D is it's on the solid line, and points on the solid line are solutions, okay? If this were a dotted line, D would not be a solution, but since it's a solid line, hence the solid line because of this guy, D would be a solution. C is going to be our answer here because it's the only point not in the shaded region. Now, what's another way we could solve it? In other words, what's a way we could check? Well, if we take each of our points and substitute them in our inequality, that should give us a true statement. That should give us a true statement. D should give us a true statement, but C should give us a false statement because it's not a solution. Let's go ahead and check by substituting um, negative 2 in for x and 2 in for y, and let's just see. So if I substitute 2 in for y, y is less than or equal to 2x plus 3. If I simplify, I have 2 is less than or equal to negative 4 plus 3, or in other words, 2 is less than or equal to negative 1. This is a false statement. 2 is not less than or equal to negative 1. The negative number is going to be less than the positive number. Since that's a false statement, we know that C is not a solution. So by using this test point strategy, we've confirmed the answer that we got from our graph. Okay, um, With all questions like this, I'd always encourage you to go through all your answer choice. I would substitute these all in and make sure I get a true answer, a true answer, and a true answer to make sure that C is the odd man out. Let's do another one. The graph, blah, 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 is shown on the grid. Which order pairs a solution set of this inequality? Well, um, once again, we can solve this in two different ways. One way would be to take each of these answer choices and substitute them into this inequality to see which one gives you a true statement because we're looking for which one is a solution. So that means only one of these should give us a true statement when we substitute it in. Also, only one of these should fall in the shaded area when we graph it. So let's just solve it both ways real quick. So um, I'm going to start with the graph. So I'm going to try to get y by itself because the first thing we do in graphing is um, put it in slope intercept form. So I'm going to subtract 0.5x from each side. And I have negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative 0.5x plus 3. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by negative 2 on each side. And I've got y on the right side. If you weren't sure what this was, you could throw it in your calculator, but that's going to be 1 fourth x um, minus 1.5. Okay. Now, here's what's crazy. Whenever I divide by a negative on each side of my inequality, I have to, have to, have to remember to flip that inequality symbol. It's only when we divide or multiply by a negative on each side, but that is a super important thing with inequalities, okay? But really, here's the inequality that we're graphing. If we look, they've already given us the boundary line for it. We've got our y-intercept of negative 1.5. We've got my slope of 1 fourth. So all I have to do is the shading. We have our solid line because of the or equal to, but we need to know that that less than symbol means that we are shaded below. So now it's just a matter of going through the answer choices. Um, answer choice A, negative 2.5 would be there. That is not a solution because it is not in the shaded region. Answer choice B is 2, 1. That is obviously not in the shaded region. Answer choice C is 2, negative 1. Ooh, that's on the line, so we're going to have to think about that one. But let's go ahead and go to answer choice D. Answer choice D is negative 2, negative 0.5, which would be there. Okay, um, C is going to be a solution because points on this line are solutions because of the or equal to symbol. If that was strictly less than and we had a dotted line here, then C would not be a solution. But we can tell really just by plotting the points. Even if I knew nothing about inequalities, I see that we've got kind of three points that are on the same side of the line and one point on the line. So that should be enough to tip us off that C is the answer. But just if we wanted to check it, we can come over here to the side and I'm going to take my inequality. It doesn't matter if I take the original form or the slope-intercept form, but I'll take the original. 0.5x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 3. And we're going to test our solution of 2, negative 1. So I'm going to substitute um, 2 in for x, negative 1 in for y, and we're going to see if that's greater than or equal to 3. So 0.5 times 2 is 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And we can see once I simplify that uh, 
3 is greater than or equal to 3. That is a true statement because 3 isn't greater than 3, but it is equal to 3. So we've graphed the inequality and seen that our point's on the line. So that's one way of seeing that's a solution. The other way is to take our points and substitute them into our inequality. We would find if we were to do this strategy with all of our answer choices, we would have a false statement, a false statement, a true statement, and a false statement showing us that C is the answer. Which graph represents the inequality X is less than 2? Okay. Well, I always like this acronym right here because when we have X is... Wait, did I say less than? Yeah, it is less than. Less than 2. We're graphing the boundary line of X equals 2. And, and I think that when we graph these lines like X equals 2 or Y equals 5, those are almost like exceptions, and we need to just kind of um, know how to graph them. And so I use the acronym Bucks Hoy. And what we know is this, vertical lines, they have an undefined slope, and their equations are x equals a number, like x equals 2. Then we have horizontal lines that have a zero, zero slope. And their equations are y equals a number, like, for example, y equals 7. Well, what we're graphing here, now that I use my little um, acronym, is that we, since we have an equation that's x equals 2, x equals a number, we know this is going to be a vertical line. That means I can already eliminate answer choice G that has it as a horizontal line. So we have basically a vertical line that goes through 2. H is the answer choice that goes through negative 2, so we don't like that either. So we're really just figuring out where to shade. Are we going to be to the left of this line, or are we going to be to the right of that line? They both have a dotted line, which is correct, because you can see our symbol. We don't have, we don't have the or equal to. If I had the or equal to as shown here, that would be a solid line. So it would be a solid line or dotted line. Solid line, dotted line. But in this case, we got the dotted line, so we're really just figuring out where to shade. Basically, I'm asking, where are my x-coordinates less than 2? Where are all the points that have an x-coordinate that's less than 2? And if I look up here, all of these points in this shade region have x-coordinates like 6 or 8 or 4 or 10. Every point over here has an x-coordinate greater than 2. That's not what we want, okay? That's not what we want. Here are the points with x-coordinates like negative 2, 0, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. All of these points in this shaded region are less than 2, so those are the ones that we want, okay? So, all that being said, F is the answer. Last question, and then we're done. Baseball fans can buy tickets to the lower deck or upper deck of the stadium. Tickets to the lower deck are $42 each. Tickets to the upper deck are 75% of the cost of the tickets to the lower deck. Oh, that's confusing, but we'll figure it out. Um... Let's see, what inequality represents all the possible combination of x, the number of tickets to the lower deck, okay, so x is the number of tickets to the lower deck, and y, the number of tickets to the upper deck that someone can buy for no more than 800, okay? Now, no more than 800 means that the amount that they spend, if this represents the amount that they spend, needs to be less than or equal to 800, if you can spend no more than 800, it means you can spend exactly 800, or you can spend less than 800. So we're really just looking at answer choices A and B, because those are the two ones that have the amount you spend to be less than or equal to 800. And then it just comes a matter of interpreting this stuff about, you know, upper deck being 75% of the cost of the lower deck. Um, basically, it tells us that the lower deck tickets are $42 each. So they're both good with that, $42 for every lower deck ticket, 42x. And so, but tickets to the upper deck are 75% the cost of the tickets to the lower deck. And it makes sense that uh, upper deck tickets cost less, right? So if I were to take my 42 and I were to multiply by 0 0.75 in your calculator, you'd get 31.5. The answer choice is going to be, oops. The answer here is going to be B, because it's $42 for every lower level seat, 
and the upper deck seats cost 75% of that. And the total of these together should be less than or equal to 800 because it says no more than 800. So this one's really about just reading and interpreting.